The Russian Revolution by Rosa Luxemburg, Chapter 7, The Struggle Against Corruption. A problem which is of great importance in every revolution is that of the struggle with the lumpen proletariat. We in Germany, too, as everywhere else, will have this problem to reckon with. The lumpen proletariat element is deeply embedded in bourgeois society. It is not merely a special section, a sort of social wastage which grows enormously when the walls of the social order are falling down, but rather an integral part of the social whole. Events in Germany, and more or less in other countries, have shown how easily all sections of bourgeois society are subject to such degeneration. The gradations between commercial profiteering, fictitious deals, adulteration of foodstuffs, cheating, official embezzlement, theft, burglary, and robbery flow into one another in such fashion that the boundary line between honorable citizenry and the penitentiary has disappeared. In this, the same phenomenon is repeated as in the regular and rapid degeneration of bourgeois dignitaries when they are transplanted to an alien social soil in an overseas colonial, colonial setting. With the stripping off of con conventional barriers and props for morality and law, bourgeois society itself falls victim to direct and limitless degeneration. For its innermost law of life is the profoundest of immortalities or immoralities, namely the exploitation of man by man. The proletarian revolution will have to struggle with this enemy and instrument of counter-revolution on every hand. And yet, in this connection too, terror is dull, nay, a two-edged sword. The harshest measures of martial law are impotent against outbreaks of the lumpen proletarian sickness. Indeed, every persistent regime of martial law leads inevitable to our to arbitrariness, and every form of arbitrariness tends to deprave society. In this regard also, the only effective means in the hands of the proletarian revolution are radical measures of a political and social character, the speediest possible transformation of the social guarantees of the life of the masses, the kindling of revolutionary idealism, which can be maintained over any length of time only through the intensi intensively active life of the masses themselves under conditions of unlimited political freedom. As the free action of the sun's rays is the most effective purifying and healing remedy against infections and disease germs, so the only healing and purifying sun is the revolution itself and its renovating principle, the spiritual life, activity, and initiative of the masses which is called into being by it and which takes the form of the broadest political freedom.